What if I told you that this, all of this isn't CGI? It's not a digital rendering, it wasn't created by AI, and it wasn't painted by the human hand. What you're watching is art created literally by itself. It's a silent, beautiful war between an asset and a base, painting a masterpiece right at the molecular level. And the most incredible part? We can make this mesmerizing art right here, right now, with just a few simple chemicals. You're about to see the hidden art of chemistry, where invisible forces create visible beauty. Stick with me, because we're about to turn this simple clear liquid into a living galaxy of color. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic table and also do experiments. So if you like this video and want to see more, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will never have to miss another episode. Also make sure to fill in the poll in the post section of the channel for next week, as we will be discussing another element. Now for every piece of art, it starts with a blank canvas. For a painter, that's a sheet of stretched linen. For us, it is this humble Petri dish. This is our arena. Inside, we are going to lay a foundation of our masterpiece. Our primer is a chemical called sodium carbonate. You probably know its close cousin, sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. Sodium carbonate is a base, which is just the chemical opposite of an acid. We dissolve a little bit of this in water and we get a perfectly clear solution. It looks like just water, but this liquid is primed and ready with a high alkaline pH. This is our canvas, waiting for the paint. So, what is the paint? It's another chemical called sodium hydrogen sulfate. This is what is known as an acid salt. When you dissolve it in water, the solution becomes acidic, giving it a low pH. So, we have our two players, the alkaline base, which sets the stage, and the acid, which will be our brush stroke. But how can we make this battle more visible? Right now, the mixing them would just give us, well, another boring clear liquid. We need a translator, something that can see the chemical changes as they happen and report back to us in a language that we can understand. Color. And that is where the real magic comes in. Now for this experiment, we again use a Mel Science box. The entire experiment, uh, from the chemicals to the Petri dish and the safety gear, comes from one of their monthly chemistry kits. Now this model contains our secret artist. This is thymol blue. It's a special kind of molecule called a pH indicator. You can think of it as a chemical chameleon. Its whole job is to change color depending on the pH level, the measure of how acidic or alkaline a solution is. Now, right now our Petri dish is filled with that basic sodium carbonate solution. Let's add a few drops of thymol blue. Watch this. Now with just a gentle swirl, the entire dish transforms into a deep brilliant blue. Just like that, our canvas is prepped. The thymol blue is telling us that the pH level in the dish is high and that the environment is alkaline. This beautiful blue is our starting point. It's the calm sea before the storm. Now for our magic, our paint, the acidic sodium hydrogen sulfate is ready in this dropper. The second this acid hits the base, a chemical reaction called neutralization will begin. The acid and the base will start to battle it out, swapping tiny charged particles as they react. The pH in the exact spot where the drop lands will plummet, and our indicator, our trusty thymol blue, will instantly change its color to show us this new acidic environment. Our art is about to paint itself. Let's watch. The drop hits the surface and for a split second there's just a ripple. Then an explosion of color. A sunburst of fiery red erupts at that point of impact. It's a stunning violent bloom that instantly signals a shift to highly acidic state. This red is the first moment of the reaction, the most intense point of neutralization. But watch what happens next. The red doesn't just stay put. It edges begin to soften, bleeding outward into a shocking orange as the pH starts to balance out a little bit. The orange pushes into the blue, not as an explosion, but as creeping, searching tendrils. And now the most beautiful part begins. As the acid keeps spreading and reacting with the base, 
its own power gets diluted and a new color emerges. The orange gives way to a vibrant electric yellow. This yellow is the color of a weakly acidic or neutral environment. It means the base has fought the acid to a near standstill in the areas. We now have three distinct zones of color. The deep unconquered blue of the base, the searching yellow of the neutralized front, and the lingering red and orange at the epicenter. The patterns are endlessly complex and totally unique. No two reactions will ever look the same. As the chemicals slowly diffuse, the colors shift and blend. Blue and yellow touch, creating fleeting moments of green. In the end, the entire dish becomes a silent, swirling cosmos of change in a slow, beautiful dance of molecules, a story of conflict and resolution told in a rainbow of colors. So, what you just saw was a magic. It was a beautiful battle between an acid and a base, with thymol blue acting as a war correspondent. To really get it, let's break it down. So, first off, what is pH? The term stands for potential of hydrogen. And it's just a scale from 0 to 14 that scientists use to measure how acidic or basic something is. A pH of 7 is neutral, like pure water, anything below 7 is acidic, and everything above 7 is basic or alkaline. The lower the number, the stronger the acid. The higher the number, the stronger the base. Now our canvas was a sodium carbonate solution which is alkaline with a pH above 9. Our paint was a sodium hydrogen sulfate, a acid that creates a pH below 7. But the real star of this show is thymol blue. It's a special indicator because it has two distinct color changes. In very strong acid with a pH below about 2, it turns fiery red as the solution gets less acidic from the pH of about 2.8 to 8, it turns yellow. Then, once the solution becomes basic with a pH above 9, it changes again and turns that deep blue. Think of the thymol blue molecule like a piece of origami. In its blue alkaline state, the molecule is folded in a specific way. When we add acid, we're flooding the solution with hydrogen ions. These ions force the thymol blue molecule to refold itself into a new shape. That new shape absorbs and reflects light differently, and our eyes see it as red or yellow. So when the first drop of acid hit, it created a tiny zone with a very low pH, and the thymol blue there instantly folded into its red shape. As the acid spread out and was weakened by the surrounding blue base, the pH on that expanding front line rose just enough to make the indicator molecules shift into their yellow shape. The result is that incredible gradient of color, red to orange to yellow to blue, all in one dish. Each color is a snapshot of the ongoing battle. The idea of using color to understand chemistry isn't new. For centuries, scientists used natural indicators from things like lichens to make litmus paper or even red cabbage, which we'd done in a previous episode. But these natural dyes weren't very precise. As modern chemistry took off in the late 19th and 20th century, scientists needed more accuracy. Funnily enough, the pH scale itself was only invented in 1909 by the Danish chemist named Søren Sørensen, and he was working for the Carlsberg Brewery trying to make better beer. His scale gave chemists a standard way to talk about acidity. Soon after synthetic indicators like thymol blue were created, they were a huge leap forward because they were reliable and showed multiple clear color changes. For the first time, chemists could visually pinpoint not just if a solution was acid or a base, but exactly how acid or basic it was. One of the coolest things about this experiment is that you can't create the same piece twice. Every single one is unique. Let's look at a few other paintings we made. In this first one, we added the acids in slow, deliberate drops around the edge. The result is a stunning cosmic ring effect. The acid pushes inward, creating a fiery yellow ring that traps a nebula of serene blue in the middle. It looks like a photo from a deep space telescope. 
Now for the second one, we did the opposite. We started with a neutral yellow solution and added drops of blue base. Instead of fiery explosions, we got these soft blooming clouds of indigo that gently billow outward. It's a much calmer, more serene piece of art. And for the last one, we ditched the dropper and used the pipette to drag a thin line across the dish. The reaction spread out from that line, creating this incredible feathered pattern that looks almost like a fossil of some prehistoric creature. It just shows how changing your technique completely transforms the artwork. Each dish is a self-contained universe of possibility. Now, while creating psychedelic art in a petri dish is awesome, the principle behind it, using indicators to measure pH, is a cornerstone of modern science and industry. Now, it's critical for testing our drinking water. Water facilities constantly monitor pH to make sure it is safe and won't corrode the pipes on the way to our homes. The same idea is used to maintain swimming pools and keep aquariums healthy for fish. The food and beverage industry depends on pH control. The taste, texture and shelf life of things like cheese, yogurt and soft drinks all rely on a specific pH level. In medicine, the pH of our blood is tightly regulated. If it's off, it can signal serious health problems. In fact, your own body is doing this right now. The saliva in your mouth is slightly alkaline and its job is to neutralize acids from bacteria after you eat to protect your teeth. This, by the way, is contradictory from our episode of zinc where I said that saliva is slightly acidic. Uh, this was wrong. Now, environmental scientists use pH to test the health and soil of water. Acid rain can lower the pH of lakes, harming aquatic life, and the pH of soil determines which nutrients plants can access. From farming to forensics, this simple color-changing reaction is a fundamental tool that helps us manage the world. So we've gone from a couple of clear liquids to a symphony of color. We've seen how a simple chemical, thymol blue, can react as a translator, turning the invisible dance of molecules into a visible masterpiece. It's a powerful reminder that art and science aren't separate worlds necessarily. They're two sides of the same coin, both driven by curiosity and the search for beauty. Now the universe is filled with hidden art. In the spiral of the galaxy, the patterns of a snowflake and even in the silent colorful battle inside a petri dish. Sometimes the most incredible art isn't found in a gallery, but in a lab. Now we'd like to give a big thank you to Mel Science in this video. Uh, their chemistry kits are one of the best ways to start learning science in a fun, hands-on and beginner-friendly way. Whether you are just getting started or want to refresh your knowledge, the Mel Science app acts like a personal science tutor, guiding you step by step through each experiment. We highly recommend Mel Science to anyone curious about chemistry, young or old. And as a special offer for our viewers, you can get a 50% off of your first month with the promo code CUBE50. There is also an amazing annual deal where you get 12 months for the price of 8. Perfect for anyone ready to dive into science all year long. Now we would like to thank the members that support our channel. Thanks for doing this. Uh, we really appreciate you. Now, if you think we missed anything, tell us in the comments. And if you want to know more about cabbage and how it reacts to pH, watch this video next.